thank you guys for coming to this. Thank you. And give it up for Miranda and JP one more time. That was fucking awesome. I am way too ADHD to put something like this together, so thank you guys so much for everything that you did. Uh, thank you for coming to this. Uh, please don't heckle me. Like, I know every single one of you personally. If any of you yells at me, I'll just be like, Zach, get the fuck out. <laughs> okay, so let's all be chill. Uh, yeah, so uh, Chris D'Elia got in trouble. <laughs> Uh, Chris D'Elia getting in trouble is a lot like that clip of Kanye West interrupting Taylor Swift at the VMAs. Still funny. Uh, <laughs> if any of you guys don't know, Chris D'Elia is a terrible stand-up comedian who was accused of essentially trying to crowdsource child porn from his underage fans, whom he was also having sex with, allegedly, you know. <laughs> Uh, and look, before we get into all of that, I just want to say that Chris D'Elia is not funny at all. Like, I don't give a fuck how many people laughed at his jokes. People used to laugh at blackface, okay? Sometimes the audience is wrong. <laughs> All right, and what struck me about like the day that Chris D'Elia got canceled, a day that will live in infamy, is uh, the fact that like everyone defending him had such weak defenses. You know, they were like, it's legal to fuck high schoolers in Nevada. <laughs> if you have ever Googled age of consent laws by state, just go to your nearest prison and self-surrender. Uh, <laughs> All right, yeah, I know it's legal to fuck high schoolers in Nevada. Bestiality is legal in five states, but if Chris D'Elia fucked a cow, you wouldn't be like, well, hang on, was he in Kentucky? Because <laughs> if he was in Kentucky, then he technically didn't do anything wrong. So, I'm um, something of an intellectual. Uh, <laughs> God, it's just so fucking absurd to me. Like the idea that this man was accused of sticking his dick in people's kids and I'm supposed to give a fuck about which side of Lake Tahoe he was on. <laughs> like I just fucking don't. Uh, people were like, look, some of the high schoolers wanted to fuck Dalia. And I'm like, I know. But wanting to fuck Chris Dalia is actually a sign that you're not mature enough for sex. <laughs> Bitch, I don't care if you're 30, you not ready, okay? <laughs> People were like, well, maybe he didn't know that the girls DMing him were in high school. And I'm like, yeah, if you're Justin Bieber's favorite comedian, then you do know you're gonna get DM'd by a bunch of high schoolers. Don't fuck any of them. I mean, if you think about it, this whole thing is Bieber's fault for having shitty taste in comedy. <laughs> All right, and you know what? Just in case anyone does think that Dalia didn't know what he was doing was wrong, in 2010, he tweeted, having sex with a minor is wrong. Uh, <laughs> fuck that dude. People had these shittiest defenses. They're like, technically, he's not a pedophile. He's actually an afibophile. That shit had me feeling like the bitch for Mean Girls. I'm like, stop trying to make a fibophile happen. It's not going to happen. <laughs> People were like, you know, teenage girls, their brains are still developing, but their bodies are mature. Ew. Um, <laughs> gross. Uh, two things. One, that underdeveloped brain is the thing you're damaging the most when you assault a minor. And second, I don't give a fuck how big a pair of titties a high school girl has. Leave her alone. Um, <laughs> It's fucking gross, dude. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys saw that insane apology video that Dalia posted on YouTube. One of the most unhinged things I've ever seen in my fucking life. He just kept saying, all of my relationships were consensual and legal. And I'm like, yeah, the word legal is doing a lot of the heavy lifting in that <laughs> sentence. He apologized for cheating. I'm like, no one is upset at you for cheating because nobody thought you were faithful. Um, <laughs> There's a rumor that Chris D'Elia was swiping on Tinder in the back of the Laugh Factory the night his son was born. We know you're a cheater, okay? No one gives a shit. Uh, like, it's so fucking stupid. It's clearly, it's clear that his, like, plan was if I call myself a cheater, maybe everyone else will stop calling me a pedophile. And it's like, no, I'm gonna still do it, though. <laughs> like, are you seriously trying to imply that Netflix edited your ass out a whole movie because they found out you were unfaithful to the random woman you accidentally got pregnant? Like, I'm <laughs> not fucking stupid.
You know, like you got dropped by your agents. You don't get dropped by your agents for cheating. Are you trying to tell me that CAA, the agency that represents Mel Gibson, <laughs> found out that you cheated, called you up and was like, I thought you were a good man. Like, <laughs> fuck out of here. <laughs> he just, he was like, uh, he, in that stupid video, he was like, I, I just don't know what's wrong with having sex with somebody that wants to have sex with you. I'm like, well, does she have school in the morning? Because <laughs> if she does, that's what's wrong. God, I, I can't get mad at Chris D'Elia for lying because if he tells the truth, he'll go to prison. So I, I guess I can just get mad at all the people who believe the bullshit in that stupid video. Because like uh, some people that I, I, I once respected saw that video and then we're like, I hope Chris D'Elia gets the help he needs. I'm like, that is not what you're supposed to hope. <laughs> okay, you're supposed to hope that the victims get his home address and then go to his house and kill him and his entire family. <laughs> okay, I hope that they drop kick his baby into a hot tub. <laughs> uh, I think we can end that lineage. Um, <laughs> I'm fucking kidding, all right? I'm, you know what? Uh, actually, I'm not kidding. Uh, if you were offended by that joke, I just have one thing to say. I'm not sorry for any joke that I've ever told in my entire life. I don't give a fuck what you think about it. Figure your own shit out if your feelings are hurt. Uh, I'm kidding, I want to apologize for that last joke. Um, that shit was way over the line. That was completely uncalled for. <laughs> Le leave the kid alone, all right? It's not his fault that his dad is allegedly, but I'm pretty sure a pedophile. Um, <laughs> look, satire requires clarity, lest it contribute to the thing it's trying to criticize, so let me be clear, leave the kid alone, okay? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That Crystalia, he's always on Instagram, like using his son as a human shield. Like, look at me, you guys. I'm just a father. I'm like, you some other things too, though. I, I, I ain't forget about all that other stuff, man. <laughs> you know? God. <laughs> I am anti-gun, which is why I'm gonna shoot Crystalia in the chest with a crossbow. Um, <laughs> It's gonna take him 55 minutes to die. That's plenty of time to think of all your mistakes. Uh, I'm kidding, leave him alone. Actually, I have some really good reasons why nobody should hurt Chris D'Elia, his kid, his family, any of them, all right? Uh, because due process can't do anything about guys like D'Elia, Chris D'Elia's punishment is gonna be a two-parter. Uh, the first part was hilariously losing his entire career on Twitter. The second part is gonna be when his son grows up, finds the Wikipedia page, and then immediately and permanently loses all respect. <laughs> Once that kid types his dad's name into Google, Chris D'Elia ain't gonna be able to tell him shit. Be like, uh, hey son, I, I think you shouldn't play so many video games. You shouldn't have fucked so many teenagers, dad, but you did it though. Get the fuck out of my room, pedophile. You know? Like... <laughs> That's actually just how all rich white boys speak to their fathers. <laughs> like, get the fuck out of my room, pedophile. And the dad is like, I'm a judge, Connor. You know, like, <laughs> God, uh, I cannot wait. Like, you can't hurt Crystal and his family. Like, I can't wait until that kid gets older and then brings home his first girlfriend. You know, like, hey, Dad, this is Emma, and oh, you don't have to hug her, Dad. No handshakes, no high fives. You don't have to touch her at all. Uh, actually, we're not even staying. I'm just getting my stuff. We're gonna go see a movie. I would ask you for a ride to the movie theater, but Emma's mom says that she's not allowed to get in the car with you. <laughs> just gonna tie my jump rope to the back of her bicycle. She can pull me on my skateboard. <laughs> Gotta leave now, because the movie starts in three hours. <laughs> I have hated Chris D'Elia for so fucking long. Ever since I saw his first Comedy Central Presents, like I distinctly remember my sister being like, can you turn this off? Like, and I was like, yeah, this dude fucking sucks. <laughs> no Pain came out, it was April of 2020, we're in the pandemic, I had nothing better to do, so I just like lit a joint and turned it on with an open mind. And I actually laughed at a bunch of the jokes. I couldn't fucking believe it. I, I, I turned that shit off halfway through and just sat there. I was like, oh my God, I hate this dude so much and it's not his jokes. Like, I hate this dude and it's personal. <laughs> <laughs>
I swear to God, like I sat there kind of feeling like a bad person. I was like, why do you hate this dude so much? Like, you don't have a good reason to feel so strongly about this motherfucker. I tried to stop hating him for like five minutes and I couldn't. After five minutes, I just had to go on black. I don't have to like this guy. <laughs> Uh, and then he got in trouble, but he's not the only one who got in trouble, so let's talk about the rest of them. <laughs> Louis C.K. got in trouble. Louis C.K. was a big one. Uh, I remember when he got in trouble, because all of my guy friends were like, uh, that is terrible. Because he was my favorite comedian. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's why it sucks. Uh, God, they didn't let Louis C.K. do the voice of the dog in The Secret Life of Pets 2, and I was like, come on. Dogs have been masturbating in front of unwilling participants since the dawn of time. Okay, how are you gonna take away the role my man was born to play? <laughs> I think that like a lot of confusion happens because some guys don't realize that like you're supposed to be naked with someone. Uh, <laughs> You are not supposed to be naked at someone. <laughs> That's a, an important difference there. Uh, when uh, Louis C.K. got canceled, uh, a bunch of people were saying like, you can't get rid of his career, he's a comedy genius, we need his input on like culture. And I just wanna say that that argument does not apply to Crystal Lee. <laughs> we can easily afford to lose that guy. <laughs> we do not need him around at all. <laughs> Uh, Brad Williams did not get accused of anything. He ratted himself out. <laughs> Brad Williams was on a podcast and they were like, tell me a crazy story from your days on the road. And the story Brad Williams chose to tell was that he was opening for Carlos Mencia. Some chick blew the tour bus driver to try to get in to the tour bus so she could fuck Carlos Mencia. And then Carlos, as a prank, got her in the bedroom, got all her clothes off, told her to wait right here, turn the lights down, and then sent Brad Williams in to rape her. Good one. A hilarious gag from two titans of comedy. <laughs> Brad Williams' big defense for himself was that the story was fake because no victim ever came forward. I'm like, she's probably dead. <laughs> um, I know I would be. <laughs> If that shit happened to me, I'd clear a beer bong full of Drano in five seconds. Fuck out of here. <laughs> that bitch killed herself, went to heaven, told God what happened, and then God was like, don't worry, girl, I got you. <laughs> I'm gonna meet to Brad Williams on the day his daughter is born. Uh, Aziz Ansari, that was controversial, but what no one is really talking about is the fact that like he was 35 and she was 22. I feel like if you were to run back that whole date with a woman who was the same age as Aziz, he would not have gotten me to. Like a 35 year old woman is not gonna be like, Aziz was pressuring me to blow him and then I got sad and I didn't want to and now I'm telling my story. You know, like a 35 year old woman is just gonna be like, hey Aziz, I've been sucking your dick for a couple of minutes now, but I actually just changed my mind. <laughs> you, you didn't notice because your head was back and your eyes were closed, but I already called an Uber. I'm gonna leave now, and that is the last you will hear from that bitch, okay? You can't go on a date with a 22-year-old and then turn around like, she embarrassed me in public. That's what they do. <laughs> I'm not gonna waste any time talking about Joey Diaz because he'll be dead in a week. <laughs> Eliza Schlesinger, uh, she didn't meet to anyone, but did you guys know that in one of her early specials she uses the N-word? <laughs> there are some white people who use the N-word with this energy, you know, this now is my chance energy <laughs> that I do not fuck with at all. <laughs> Speaking of using the N-word, Neil Brennan. Uh, Neil Brennan used to use the N-word a lot, but I'm not gonna give him any shit for it because I'm only half black. And I don't think that uh, I have the authority to tell Dave Chappelle's white friend whether or not he can say nigga. <laughs> like, I can tell Eliza whatever I want, you know? <laughs> I can fucking lay into Eliza, but if I tell Neil no and then Dave says it's fine, I think I've been overruled. <laughs> Um, here is my impression of Neil Brennan on his podcast talking about women. These gold digging attention whores deserve equal pay. <laughs> Nigga, whose side are you on? 
should listen to the podcast How Neil Feel if you want to watch a grown ass man stick one foot on being an ally to women and another foot on being a toxic man and then desperately try to keep his balance like a goddamn baby giraffe. Chris Rock said that he thinks that rape would be less frequent if women wouldn't drink or hang out around drunk men. And a lot of people believe that. I used to believe that. So let's break it down. If women can't hang out around drunk guys, that means women can't go to bars, clubs, concerts, college, uh, <laughs> raves, music festivals, most weddings, some funerals, fucking Applebee's. <laughs> But let's say that women actually did stop going to all of those places. Like, what do you think rapists are gonna do? Just get out the game? <laughs> no, they're gonna go to wherever it is your female friends are drinking and then we're right back to square one. Brendan Schaub is a fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't know if this happens to anyone else, but whenever I picture Brendan Schaub in my mind, his eyes are crossed. <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever... <laughs> I don't know if you guys have ever heard Brendan Schaub speak, but he has the perfect voice for how dumb he is. <laughs> I saw him doing stand-up and I was like, what the fuck is he doing? But then I remembered he used to do martial arts and he's been punched in the head a thousand times. And I was like, oh, he's doing his best. <laughs> Brendan Schaub's next comedy album is gonna be called My Wife is Mexican and I Hate Her Guts. <laughs> uh, Andrew Santino, that fucking gay slur. You can, only, <laughs> you can only use homophobic language if you're gay. I see Andrew Santino and I'm like, hang on, I'm gonna go fuck a woman and when I get back, I'm gonna describe your behavior. <laughs> Andrew Santino has this joke where uh, he says that black men can't marry white women because white women are too petite and dainty. He says black men have to marry black women, like big, strong, tough black women so that they give birth to big, strong, tough professional athletes. I'm like, when you're talking about breeding black people for physical prowess, how you don't feel like a slave owner, dude? <laughs> like that shit happened to one of my ancestors. The last person in my family to be a slave had 500 kids. My, some of my relatives try to say that we're like distantly related to Kobe Bryant. I'm like, 500 kids? We are related to everyone. <laughs> All right, I'm out here dating a white guy because all of these niggas is my cousin. <laughs> uh, Whitney Cummings, I love it when white women dye their hair blue as a cry for help. Um, <laughs> I wanted to have a part in this show where I was like Bobby Lee, you know, like all menacingly, but then I was just gonna go like, I love him and I hope he's having a nice day and then move on to shitting on other comics, but uh... Then you hear about Bobby Lee and it's like, God damn, you cannot get past at the comedy store until you at least bite a woman. <laughs> uh, if you guys have been to the comedy store, you know, like they have the wall with all the comedians names on it. Like as you're walking in, you can literally just go one, two, three. This one punched a lady. Like <laughs> every few months, somebody takes a sledgehammer and destroys Donald Trump's star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, which if you haven't seen it, it's right next to Kevin Spacey. The comedy store better pray that no one starts sledgehammering the names of sexual predators or else the walls of that building would look like fucking Swiss cheese. <laughs> it was wild because like a lot of comics were defending Chris D'Elia. It's weird with these free speech comics, when, cause like when it comes to rape jokes, they're like, I can say whatever I want, whenever I want, and if you don't like it, that's your problem. But when it comes to rape accusations, they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try to use our words responsibly, guys. <laughs> Theo Vaughn, there was a clip from his podcast that started circulating after Dalia got canceled. Uh, where like Theo Vaughn was saying that if he was gonna rob Chris D'Elia, he would disguise himself as a 17 year old girl, fuck Chris D'Elia, and then go through his house and steal shit. I was like, um, okay, Theo Vaughn, uh, I guess I'll just look at you different till the day you die. <laughs> The lengths that some people will go to to be like, well, it's none of my business. It's the police business, Theo. That's whose fucking business this is. God, Theo Vaughn said that he had no idea about Crystalia's predatory behavior. And I was like, are you a rape victim, Theo Vaughn? Because I don't believe you. Um, <laughs> It's one of my favorite joke in this whole thing. Um, 
look, if he's still trying to do stand up. I couldn't fucking believe it. I'm like, if I was Chris D'Elia's friend, like, d does, does he not have anyone in his life that can just sit him down, look him in the eyes, and be like, dude, it's over. Like, you're not gonna be a comedian anymore. Your allegations are worse than Louis, they're worse than Aziz, Brian Callen, TJ Miller. Like, on the list of stand up comics who have been accused of doing horrible shit to women, it goes Bill Cosby and then you. <laughs> <laughs> so you're fucking done, dude. <laughs> But uh, yeah, don't worry, you'll get your big Where Is He Now interview in 20 years, but we can't miss you if you don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> like, I think that Chris Elia should just like log off, delete the apps, and try to raise his son to be a better man than him, which should be pretty fucking easy. <laughs> like, seriously, if that kid grows up and only attacks three women, I'ma call that a W, <laughs> you know? <laughs> People are like, oh, Alice, when are you gonna forgive these guys? I don't wanna forgive them. I, I wanna saw their heads off, like an ISIS <laughs> recruitment video. Like, uh, after, uh, actually last week, Chris D'Elia, he did a show at the Improv, and um, just out of morbid curiosity, I decided to go. <laughs> uh, but the entire time I was sitting in the show, I was just like imagining like sawing his head off, just like fucking holding up his severed head like I'm fucking Kathy Griffin, you know? My psychiatrist would call that an intrusive thought. <laughs> um, there's this, this feminist author who said that like, with all of this focus on forgiveness, the reality is we don't know what real repentance looks like because we have yet to see a man really try. And I'm like, I, I gotta forgive Louis, why? Like, what has Louis done to deserve my forgiveness? Louis tried to get Pete Davidson fired from SNL because he caught Pete smoking weed. Fuck Louis, he's a cop, you know? <laughs> Michael Vick got caught making dogs fight each other, which is so fucking funny. He went from being in the NFL to having to spend almost two years in prison. And then after he got out, he started working with dogs and like turned it all around. And now he's like currently trying to rid the world of the type of man that he used to be. You know, he went from having it all to killing dogs to prison to having it all again. Like they let him back in the NFL. Louis C.K. got caught jerking off in front of a few women and then sat down and was like, well, I guess there's nothing I can do but pout. It's like, d <laughs> if the sex criminals want my forgiveness, they need to do what Michael Vick did and start advocating for bitches. <laughs> The way that men talk about assault is so fucking wild. Cause it's like misogynists don't respect women. They don't respect gay people. They only listen to other straight guys. But like straight guys rarely ever talk about assault without joking about it. And it's like, you guys gotta do something about this. Like I was watching Red Table Talk. Will Smith was talking to Kevin Hart about their daughters. And they were like, oh, they grew up in such luxury. They just don't get that there's bad guys out there. And I'm like, you guys could do something about this. <laughs> You're famous enough to where you could actually help here, you know? Like you could just team up and tackle this issue, make the world a better place for your daughters. You get Chris Rock in there, you know? Um, no white people though. Uh, John Krasinski's gonna try to get in, but you don't need him. <laughs> like, Dwayne Johnson is as light skin as I'm willing to go on this. <laughs> But yeah, uh, at the show that Dalia did, uh, he said that he was suicidal after he got canceled. I wanted to put some of these jokes on YouTube. I'm like, what if he saw it and then killed himself? You know, that would be a tragedy. A young boy would lose his father, but he would gain an even better stepfather. So, <laughs> it's pros and cons. Um, <laughs> he had this joke uh, where he talked about how he's like, in therapy and he's working on his anger and he got into this situation with his fiance where he was like having to like keep his cool, you know? And I was like, you're goddamn right you kept your cool. You are in no position to give any attitude to a woman who stayed with you after all that shit. You fix your fucking face when you speak to that woman. Whenever you're tempted to get frustrated, just try to remember that she could get soul custody with one phone call. Fucking smile, dude. Her coffee's not ready every fucking morning. <laughs> like you don't deserve her. You don't deserve any woman. You deserve to hold a giant boulder and then walk into the sea. Let's start there. <laughs>
I think Chris D'Elia's problem is that he forgot that every single comedian is a loser. You know, like he thought he was cool, so he got in over his head. You know, and I get that. People think I'm cool because I have this afro, but I was homeschooled. <laughs> For religious reasons. I have seen the looks on cool people's faces mid-conversation when they realize what a loser I am. <laughs> there's consequences for being a whore. And Chris D'Elia was a fucking whore. You know, like there's ran through and then there's Chris D'Elia. <laughs> what I'm saying is that Chris D'Elia's toddler son definitely gets cold sores from the saliva in his father's kisses. <laughs> Look, if I could say something to Delia, number one, I would be like, there, there, buddy. You know, you're still a tall white millionaire, unless you had to give all your money to the woman that sued you, in which case, yikes. Um, <laughs> secondly, I'd, I'd be like, look, you gotta fucking... <laughs> Chris Delia is everything that you do not want in a white man. And since he does not seem to understand that his career is over, I would just look him in the eyes and say it to him as white as I possibly could. Like, Dalia, your goose is cooked. Does that make sense? <laughs> You're done here. Um, and then lastly, I would tell Chris Dalia that 13 years from now, when he gets into high school, I'm gonna fuck your son. Um, <laughs> I swear to God. You let that kid out of your sight for a second, I will fuck him to shreds. Do you understand? Uh, I'm not gonna fuck Chris D'Elia's teenage son. That would be disgusting. He's probably gonna grow up to look like his dad. All right, thank you guys for coming. My name is Alice Hamilton. That was fun. talk it's Alice's recital all right she is doing a three-hour performance of the Nutcracker tonight yeah. followed by a, an encore that lasts four hours okay yeah did anybody bring her flowers it's a recital yo fuck oh, you guys fucking pull up bring flowers Yay, support Alice, a all right sign. we got okay Alice you're gonna sign you that's all sign. you got Alice yeah, you she's up the there everybody make it loud for Alice up there one more time Woo! Alice we fucking love you